In this video, we're going to look at how we can identify a user that's pre-authenticated. So we're going to authenticate the users using Azure AD, and then we're going to actually identify them in Cycle CDP. So we'll send an identity event to be able to identify this user and hence converting them from a visitor to an actual customer, passing in some parameters. So let's get started. The first step I did was actually use the same uh, item we had last time. So we have here our uh, box ever initialization and pushing event for the location of the page. And then we have at the top here, you'll see the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. We're using that for the authentication and that creates just the sign in button and hooks it up to signing in from within uh, Microsoft Azure AD. So just to show you how that works, you'll see here I have my login page and that's really what it boils down to it's just a login page with a very simple uh, sign in button. And what I'm going to do now is just click on that button and see the whole process through. So as I click on this button here uh, in logging in, it's going to redirect me to the Microsoft Azure AD authentication. I can click on that and then it will redirect me back showing me who I am or who the user that's logged in is. Now, this is the starting point, and based on this starting point, we actually want to continue writing our code. So we have here um, an event handler that I've created. So you'll see that I'm query selecting the MGT login and adding an event listen listener to the login completed event. Once this happens, I'm getting the user's username and getting their information from the Microsoft Graph or the Microsoft Graph Toolkit. The next thing I want to do is actually start using integrating or hooking up the box ever information into that and the way i'm going to do that is i'm going to actually do like i'm going to paste some code in this response here and i'll explain it as we go through it so let me just format it so here i just created a new header and i created within that header my authorization token with basic authentication now one important thing is how do we get that ID, where do we get that ID from, that basic authentication ID? And the answer to that is really quite simple. It's actually your API key and your API um, value. So if we go back to Sitecore uh, CDP, so if I open Sitecore CDP here, go back to Partner, Systems, API Access, we'll see that we have the client key and the API token. The easiest way I usually find to do that is just put them in Postman and from Postman, we're able to retrieve that information. So what I do is just create my uh, API request here, add the username, add the password, and then just send it. And then once I send it, I can go to code and it will create my header here. I can just copy it and paste it back into my Visual Studio code. So that's really how uh, to get that basic authentication added up here. And then as I go down, we're going to really see the rest of the information here. So we'll see here uh, what I'm doing is actually fetching the current guest. So it's the box ever guest ref. And then I'm asking if it's visitor, then this is, means I need to identify them. If it's a guest of type customer, this is something we're going to see later is what we can do if it's a customer already. So do I need to do something here? And in some scenarios you do, and we're going to cover some of these scenarios later on. But for now, let's focus on if they are a visitor. So I'm going to go in here and add that visitor uh, statement here. So again, it's the same kind of thing of creating an event. So I'm creating an event. The type of it is identity. The page is again, windows.location.path name. The POS, I'm just going to use the same POS I have, uh, I got previously or I'm using previously, which is uh, not do's and marketing. It's actually Cycle CDP training series. So let me use that. And then you'll see here, I'm using the browser ID as from boxever.getID. Email is from email info, uh, which is again coming from my email info or my username here from Microsoft Graph. And then I have my given name, my surname and my job title all coming from Microsoft Graph as well. Okay. Um, so just 
so that we can cover this, uh, the remaining piece. Now that I'm done with that, I should be able to send out that request and it should be able to identify this user for me. So let's do that now. I'm back here in my login page. I'm gonna log in. And as soon as I log in, what's gonna happen is it's actually gonna try to send that client ID. Uh, I forgot to just update the client ID to the actual correct client ID. So let me go back here and fix that very quickly. So I'll go back to my page and add my actual client ID and client secret um, that I have hidden as we were working through this. Okay, now let's try refreshing again. I wanna actually sign out from this user and I'll sign in again now. So we'll go back to logging in, signing in, and I wanna sign in with Megan. And now the request is being sent and now Megan should be authenticated. So just to check that, I'll go to box ever dot get ID I'll take Megan's ID from here I'll go back to my uh, environment my Cycle CDP environment here and what I'll do is I'll actually go to customer data guests and then search with the ID the ID is that one and you'll see now her name is Megan Baum and we'll see that she is actually converted and you'll see that a guest identified as Megan here, as well as all her details, like her email has been added, uh, her title has been added and uh, guest type is now customer. In the next video, we're gonna actually see how we can extend that data. So how we can add data extensions to her, like I have done here. So we're gonna see how that's done in the next video. Thanks for watching.